Seasons greetings everyone and today we're going to do a watercolor actually a line and wash of sorts of this beautiful plant. In case you're not familiar well I'm not sure how you couldn't be this is a poinsettia and I have a fun fast and simple way to draw and paint one of these and probably an afternoon two or three hours tops. Okay okay I'll get it out of your way. You don't have appreciation for poinsettias? Well here let me help you with that. There you go, fake, just like you. Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. We're going to start uh, drawing here from my reference, which is over there on my iPad. I'll show you the reference in just a bit. I'm going to use this Kilimanjaro sketchbook, 100% cotton sketchbook. Great little sketchbook. I do a lot of... Uh, botanicals in that sketchbook. Uh, one of the things I want to stress as I get into drawing this is this particular, or there's my reference by the way. Now you will not see this reference the whole time and I know a lot of you request that and the reason I don't do that is because I depart quite a lot from it and it will just confuse you. You'll say well he's drawing that there but I see that over there and that's not at all the same. So I get the characteristics of the leaves and the veins, and I usually end up recomposing the scene to my liking. Patrons, I will have downloadable reference for you so that you can compose your own scene or copy it exactly if you prefer. But uh, anyway, as I get into the drawing, what I really want to stress here is to spend some time on this. And this particular technique, a lot depends on the line. Now, uh, technically, this is a line and wash. Uh, and all that is is just uh, using some media. Traditionally, it's ink, uh, but you can use ballpoint pen. You can use, like I'm doing today, colored pencil. Uh, you can use all sorts of things. You can use dip pens with colored ink. And I considered doing that, but in the end, I decided on colored pencil. We'll talk about that more later, but I'm focusing on the drawing here. Now, these leaves just have some really interesting curves and characteristics. Uh, the way they quickly come to a point, the way they sometimes have little uh, divots in the side. And I pay attention to all that so that I can make or invent my own leaves, so to speak, rather than just copying all the leaves that I see. I want to understand the characteristics of those leaves. To me, that's very important. So I spent a lot of time. And the other thing is, since this is going to be very heavily focused on line, or that's going to become a major part of it, I really get into making those lines nice. And this is what I want you to think about if you want to do this. Just lovingly beautify those lines. I mean, we're talking about just some beautiful curves here. So as you see me work on this and refine it, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm not only composing the scene the way I like it, but uh, I'm just working on getting those beautiful, pleasing curves right where I want them. That's why I like to compose these myself. So I've got it drawn out in pencil, and now I'm just going to pick some colored pencils. Uh, I don't know exactly what I want to use, probably a lighter red and a darker red. So I picked like three or four, and I will list the ones in the description that I actually used. But here again, uh, I am just really focusing on beautifying that line. When you do this, you know, don't just get into a trace mode where you're tracing that line. Just really think about making that line sing. I have arthritis in my hands and my hands shake a bit. So if you do these lines in pieces with some nice flow, uh, it doesn't matter. If you're gripping your pencil tightly and you're meticulously tracing that line, uh, yeah, you'll have some problems and it'll look exactly like you did that. So we're just going to go through here and completely outline these. Now I am not outlining every inch of these. I'm leaving, especially on the outer leaves, I'm leaving some gaps. I want the detail to fall off as we get to the outside. And I'm also wanting to have some lost and found edges. And so that's what I've done. And now I uh, just want to hint 
at some of the internal veins. Uh, in actuality, as you'll see, these light internal lines end up getting lost. So I will have to go back and strengthen that line uh, and maybe re-render a lot of it. So I expect to do that. But the focus here, now that I'm done with those uh, outer lines, is, the focus here is impression. Impression, impression, impression. I am not going to put in every vein. This is going to be an expressionistic, slightly impressionistic piece. Very representational, but impressionistic. And I just want to hint at those veins and the values that, that really sort of vary across the leaf as you get those stripes in the vein. All right, so that's pretty much done. Now I'm just gonna pre-wet the whole paper. Uh, this is the Sterling Edwards blending and glazing brush, uh, but I like it as a pre-wetter. It's probably my favorite pre-wetter. It's very stiff and I don't push. Uh, it may seem like I'm pushing, you know, I'm going to rub the paper, but I just let it glide across. But the stiffness of that, I think, just kind of pushes that water into the paper a little better. And I'm just going to go for this color. Now, this is where the most expressionistic part is and why I pre-wet the paper. This is my main middle red. This is a Pirol red. And I am not again, going to fill in those leaves like I'm coloring. I'm just going to let it go wild, so to speak. And I am radiating the color out from the center in the same way that the leaves radiate. But I'm not coloring in those leaves. I'm letting it go outside the leaf lines, stay in within the leaf lines, leave some white space, and just let it be very expressive. A lot of the detail is going to be put in with the line work. And you'll see that coming up. Here what I'm doing is uh, drying out my brush. It's still damp, but it's dry enough to pick up a few lighter highlights here and there. So uh, I'm just doing that to aid me in delineating those edges as I go. I had a rundown over there on the far left side. I'm not worrying about it. Uh, that's not really where I wanted <laughs> the paint to run down, but that's fine. I, I'm not really caring about that. This is going to be expressive enough that it won't matter. Now I'm just taking a smaller brush. Again, uh, it's fairly dry compared to the surface, and I'm picking up a little bit of paint just to define the edges. I had that, by the way, when I did the, the wet and wet, I had that nearly flat. If you don't like dealing with rundown, you may just want to put it completely flat. Now here's where we start to uh, really make these shapes come alive. And this is just a little bit of negative painting. And again, since this is going to be uh, lost and found edges with a lot of expressive color, I'm only going to go into some corners and some recesses to do this negative painting rather than paint around all the leaves. But I wanted to do enough negative painting uh, for one thing, I want to add or, or hint at that green that is underneath those, you know, the green leaves that come as part of this plant. But the other is, you know, I really want to start defining some of the shapes. And when you're dealing with lost and found edges, uh, just a little bit of creating an edge will lead your eye to kind of fill in the rest. It's, it's just kind of a neat effect. And I love doing that. So you're going to see me just poking these deep values into corners and recesses uh, until the leaves just really start to emerge. This part is just extremely fun and satisfying. Because you see all that expression and that wet and wet beauty, but you see those leaves start to emerge. And by the way, this is done wet on dry. I no longer have wet paper. Paper is completely dry. And now I'm bringing some of that negative painting into the leaf shapes themselves, uh, defining where the leaves overlap. Now, I probably go back later and deepen some of that. 
negative painting, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the life of these leaves is going to be done with colored pencil. This is where the line part of line and wash comes in. I'm going back and adding in some of those uh, vein impressions. So important that you uh, realize that those are impressions. You try to get detailed and put in every vein, it's just going to look really stiff and overworked. In this kind of an expressive style, I will enhance this with watercolor, uh, you know, just to make some of the variegation of the values. But for the most part, uh, the detail you see will be colored pencil. This one, I believe, is the magenta, which is a little darker than the one I started out with. I even end up pulling out a purple, which is deeper yet. But I will list, I think I ended up using three. I, I chose like five polychromos colors, ended up using three. And here I'm just going to paint in those central flowers. Those are actually the flowers, those little bitty things that almost look like berries. And they look kind of dark now. I don't think I have it on video, but I added just a tiny highlight at the end. Give them some dimension. I mainly focused this video on the line work. And hopefully you can see now why I was so intent on having just a really beautiful line, a really lovely curve to each of those leaves. And then I'm just going to finish off uh, the final touches with some faint washes, some faint glazes. When you're doing leaves like this, always think of the leaves as two halves because they usually are folded or like a v-shape if you looked at the end of the leaf and the light plays differently a lot of times on one half of the leaf versus the other half of the leaf All right, everybody, we're going to call this done. And this was just really fun to do. Such a neat, expressive piece. And if you do this yourselves, focus on a drawing, a really, really nice drawing. And then just be free and loose with the color.
Thanks everyone. Appreciate you watching and uh, thank you patrons. This is my last video for 2022. I will probably be doing something for patrons before the end of the year, but for everyone else, thank you so much for a great year and we'll see everybody in 2023. Bye-bye.